Congress has now passed a new law called Every Student Succeeds. This new law allows federal meddling in school curriculum to continue. How is this law going to affect our kids? Phyllis Schlafly will have answers in the next hour. And Phyllis welcomes you once again to Ego Forum Live. 26 years broadcasting this program. Each week, Phyllis brings you the most important issues of our time, along with top guests to discuss them. Well, as an international journalist, Alex Newman has worked to uncover the plots of progressive utopians in our educational system. For decades, they've tried to destroy our constitutional republic, he says. So now, he says, it's time to expose the crimes of educators. Of course, in just a bit, we'll be looking forward to questions and comments from listeners around the country. Now, once again, Phyllis Schlafly. And our guest today is Alex Newman. He's an internationalist journalist, has lived on four continents, and worked for numerous publications that we like. And he's a co-author with Sam Bubenfeld of a book called Crimes of the Educators. Now, let me ask you, the, the, your, the, head, the headline, the title of your book, is very provocative. And I want to ask you if it's too extreme. It's called Crimes of the Educators, How Utopians Are Using Government Schools to destroy America's children. Now, those are very strong statements. Do you think your book proves that? Uh, they are strong statements, and uh, I think our book provides all of the evidence needed to make a solid case for this, often from primary sources, you know, from the progressive utopians, the criminals themselves. And I, I realize it sounds hyperbolic, right, the crimes of the educators. And, I, you know, I think it's important to make clear we're talking about the education establishment, not, uh, you know, your average second-grade teacher in a, in a public school. But, um, you know, we lay out a series of six specific crimes that we say are being perpetrated by the education establishment against our children, against our nation, and uh, we think the evidence is rock solid uh, and, and really indisputable. So, you know, if um, if people want to learn... Well, what are a couple of those crimes? Well, the first and, and obviously most serious one that we identify is treason. Now, uh, you know, R- Ronald Reagan put together the National Commission on Excellence in Education, uh, and this was back in the 80s, and they said that if a foreign power had imposed this educational situation on us, we may well have viewed it as an act of war. And what we say is we should view it as an act of war. Just because foreigners didn't do it, it was, you know, Americans who did it, uh, we still believe it should be considered an act of war. The people who designed this system, people like John Dewey, had a very specific agenda in mind, and they told us what the agenda was, to dumb down the American people for the purpose of overthrowing the constitutional system of limited government we have and moving us toward a utopian system without private property, you know, basically communism, socialism. Uh, he pointed to Edward Bellamy's novel, 1888, called Looking Backwards. Uh, and this was about a fantasy America in the year 2000 with no private property and uh, collectivism. And, you know, this is really waging war on everything that this country... Well, what they did was to for. refuse to teach children how to read. And if they couldn't read exactly. good books... Uh, they wouldn't be able to know what a great country we had. Exactly right. And, you know, John Dewey did this deliberately and methodically. He realized that Americans were way too well educated. They had way too much faith in biblical religion and in God to be able to impose this kind of system. And they read the Bible and they read great books. Exactly. And as long as people had knowledge of history and scripture and the Constitution, you would not be able to overthrow the system. And so Dewey set about to undermine all of that by undermining literacy and by undermining the faith of the American people. And, you know, we see the fruits of that today all around us. Well, we have this uh, international expert to comment on the American system now. And how was how did they do that? Uh, well, the United Nations really has been trying to get involved in education for decades, right, going back to the founding of UNESCO uh, 60 years ago. But uh, nowadays, they really don't even bother to conceal it anymore. That's what I think is, is probably the most frightening, is that nowadays they're out in the open telling us that we need a global education system in which children will be taught new values. They'll be transformed into global citizens and green, sustainable citizens. Well, we don't want to be global citizens. We want to be American citizens. Exactly. Uh, but, you know, we have our most recent Secretary of Education, who just resigned uh, about a month ago, 
uh, he he was bragging in speeches. You can find this on the Department of Education's website that UNESCO is his global partner in uh, cradle to career education reform and turning uh, students into green global citizens. So you know they don't even bother to conceal this anymore. And I think parents ought to be extremely alarmed about this. Who sends their children to be turned into green global citizens? You know that's craziness. We send our kids to school to learn how to read and to learn how to do math, not to be indoctrinated with this silliness. Well, educators has tried for de- have tried for, for decades to enforce the narrative that so-called professionals know better for our children than parents. Do you think there's any evidence for that? Oh, it, it, it's it, it's obvious. You know, the, the the narrative is that parents are too stupid and too incompetent, and not even just parents, right? Even local communities, school boards, uh, they're they're too incompetent to deal with things like education, and so we need this. Uh, you know, coterie of international so-called experts to direct the education and the upbringing of our children. And at, at this point, you even have, uh, you know, the Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Services putting out uh, policy proposals referring to parents as equal partners with all these government experts in uh, in the raising of their own children. And frankly, this is grotesque. This is this flies in the face of everything that, you know, America stands for, everything that's written in the Bible, everything that is good. It, it's just total craziness. And again, it's out in the open now. People just need to you know, look it up. It's not even really hidden at this point. Uh, we constantly hear clamoring from the United Nations about where education should be going on an international level. Uh, what new dangers from UNESCO uh, do we need to watch out for? Well, you know, actually, it's interesting. In our book, one of the uh, sources we relied on was you, Phyllis. You, in uh, 2004, had figured out and publicized the fact that Bill Gates... Uh, had signed an agreement on behalf of Microsoft with UNESCO to develop this uh, master global curriculum for teachers. And, uh, you know, Bill Gates, of course, I think a lot of your listeners will know, is the primary financier of Common Core, uh, the, the national standards it ha- that it, the Obama administration tried to impose on all of our states. So, you know, that is just one small component of it. Uh, just last year, UNESCO and uh, the United Nations and, oddly enough, the UN Population Fund, the ones who want to uh, reduce the global population, they put together the uh, World Education Conference in Korea. And uh, just reading the press releases that coming out of this and, and, you know, even going deeper and reading the Incheon Declaration, which was the final agreement that they came out with, they're so bold. They're saying, in your face, we need to turn education into a global system that's going to transform the values of children to help lead us into this, what they call this new sustainable order where, uh, you know, we're all going to learn from the same curriculum. And UNESCO, as, as you probably know, has its own global curriculum already. They call it the World Core Curriculum. It was developed by Robert Mueller, an occultist, and uh, he wanted it taught in every school in the world. So UNESCO is also putting out materials, uh, you know, everything from guidelines on sex education, where they want to teach uh, five-year-olds things that I won't even say on the radio, uh, literally, I mean, anybody can go and find these documents online, to reading programs for how to teach reading, where they want to impose what Sam called the most absurd method of teaching reading that he had ever seen, literally, on the entire planet. So, you know, this is a very dangerous situation we're in, and uh, now you have the UN Human Rights Council. They released a declaration last year saying that governments need to regulate private schools and independent schools and religious schools and impose uh, human rights standards on them. So, you know, we're very rapidly moving into an era where even the U.S. Department of Education is not going to be the one, the chief policy setting body. So people need to realize that UNESCO has stepped way out of bounds here. And people should know about UNESCO, too. I mean, this is the entity that Ronald Reagan pulled us out of because it was filled with extremists and communists and dictators and Islamists and mass murderers. So, you know, this is a very dangerous organization. Today it's led by Irina Bokova. Uh, she, of course, is a Bulgarian communist with deep, deep ties to the mass murdering regime that once enslaved Bulgaria. Uh, her father was actually the secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party in Bulgaria during the dictatorship. So, well, uh, during the... Very- we... The problem we have with has. What, what were you going to say, Phyllis? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, the, the book Why Johnny Can't Read explained a lot of it many years ago. 
Uh, yeah, I, you know, as early as 1929, American educators were warned that the new methods could cause reading disabilities. You've written so much about phonics. Maybe you'll jump into that in just a bit. But first, I want to invite some of our listeners into the program right now. 800-736-3202. Again, 1-800-736-3202. Right here on Ego Forum Live. Eagle Forum Education Center in St. Louis is the headquarters of Eagle Forum's many educational activities. The center houses a large library of 20th century American history, a unique collection of DVDs and CDs, and extraordinary archives. Eagle Forum's publications include Education Reporter, bringing you important news about parents' rights and public school curriculum. Eagle Forum sponsors activities especially for college students and for Teen Eagles, including an annual Collegians Leadership Summit held each summer in Washington, D.C. Eagle Forum sponsors two radio series, Phyllis Schlafly's three-minute commentaries heard daily on 550 stations, and this Saturday live call-in program now heard on 75 stations. Both broadcasts are streamed on the Internet at eagleforum.org. Eagle Forum, a conservative organization of dedicated Americans, invites you to visit our website at eagleforum.org. You've probably heard that all public schools are mandated to give reading tests, and many parents are worrying whether their children will pass. If you want to find out if your child's reading skills are all they should be, we invite you to give Eagle Forum's first reading test in the privacy of your own home. Any child who has finished first grade should be able to pass this test. It will enable you to find out if your child can really read or if he has been taught to memorize a few dozen frequently used words and then just guess at other words from the pictures on the page. Eagle Forum's simple test will tell you whether your child is really reading. Don't let your child fall behind in school because he is a poor reader. Call 1-800-700-5228 and ask for our free reading test. That's 1-800-700-5228. And you can see Eagle Forum's first reading test on the website TurboReader.com. Look up the website www.TurboReader.com. On today's docket here on Eagle Forum Live, are there criminals in the American education system? Our guest, Alex Newman, says that American schools are destroying American children intellectually and dark minds plan the whole sorry deal. Well, today, Alex Newman and Phyllis Schlafly discuss the matter, and we've invited Ed Martin, the president of Eagle Forum, to join into this conversation. Ed, good to have you as well today. Hello, Ed. Great. Hello, Phyllis. Great to be on, and I have to say first to Alex, uh, what a privilege it would have been and must have been to work with uh, Samuel Blumenfeld. His, uh, his books, of course, over the decades and his leadership have been phenomenal. And I remember when we got this book, Crimes of the Educators, Phyllis called me in and she said, order six of those books, and I'll tell you why. And then we ordered them, and then she said, I'm going to explain to you. You have to read this book, understand he's pulled it all together. And I just uh, salute Mr. Blumenfeld and his great, the late, you know, great uh, leadership. What a what a service he's done for the country, and you must have been privileged to work with him. Well, he points out that the purpose of the socialists was to kill the literacy of Americans, so that they would be easier to sell uh, sell a socialism. That's right. Well, and That's I have exactly some right. stories, yeah. Phyllis. Yeah, Phyllis. When we were talking yesterday, Phyllis and I about this program and preparing for it, I was we were covering a couple things and. So I have one, one uh, anecdote about Eagle Forum and, and Phyllis's work, and then one about my own children and their, their learning to read. But first, uh, you know, Eagle Forum over the years, Phyllis wrote a column. I forget, Ryan Hyde, our comms director, will find it. But it was a decade or two ago about she called the PS report the most fulfilling thing I've ever done and spoke about how she taught her children to read. And, and at the time she taught her children to read, she developed, and then later we published, the first reader and the turbo reader, which are ways to teach your children to read. It's, it's phonics, and it's really well planned out. Yes, and I urge parents to teach their children to read before they go to school, before the school right. teaches them wrong methods. 
<laughs> That's right, and we have them still in print. And in fact, uh, just this past week, I had a, a family, a, a mother from uh, out in St. Charles County, Missouri, come in, and she said we link to the first reader on on our website and the Turbo Reader, and we we sell copies, we buy them from you, and then we distribute them to our our families, and they still use it. And I, it's an extraordinary uh, document. It's extraordinary books, and I encourage people if you go to EagleForum.org, it's building on just what you all are talking about fighting back against. But I, the second story on that is that my own children, uh, the oldest, my oldest is almost 12, and the youngest is just turning four tomorrow. But, um, but one of the middle, the third one of the four, he used the first reader, and he's the best reader in the family, so he's turning se seven in a few weeks. But at a certain point, he was explaining, I caught him teaching his older sister to catch up on how to do this because she had uh, been taught a little bit less uh, less perfectly, shall we say, in her education. So it really does work, although the footnote to that, I sent Phyllis a photo one night, late at night. Those of you that are fans of Phyllis, you should know that she does more email and work after about 10.30 at night than most people do before. But one night I sent her a photo of my daughter, three years old, uh, teaching, reading, using the first reader, and Phyllis emailed back and said, too early. You need to wait about till they're four to teach them to read. So there's a lot. It's so important, and, um, you know, we're seeing across the country. Well, what is so important is that you teach them to read before they go to school because right. uh, habits are very uh, strongly implanted in kids at, at an early age, and you need to teach them the right way before they learn the wrong way. Well, and that's kind of what happened with our, our oldest. She learned the wrong way, and it took about three or four years to really unlearn it. In some ways, she didn't unlearn it. It's a real, as you say, it's a real, it's really a destructive thing. By the way, uh, Alex, you would have smiled to, to be at our, uh, our Eagle Forum. Uh, we have an annual President's Roundtable this past le weekend. We had about 70 of our state leaders in from all across the country. We have about 140 state leaders. But 70 made it in. And one or two of them were speaking specifically about education and teaching and reading. And one of the women from Ohio jumped up and said, you know, we just decided we couldn't tolerate it anymore. We started our own school. Uh, you know, what we're seeing is, and it's a great success, it's, it's um, standing room only. What we're seeing is people that can't afford to trust anyone are either homeschooling or they're teaching their kids to read at home before they go to school or starting their own schools. And I think that's the exciting thing to think about is as people become clear-eyed about what the socialists were doing and how they're trying to destroy the country, they're reacting and acting for the good of their families. Well, we're well, glad to hear all that good information. Glad for people to know about Ed Martin, who is the new president of Eagle Forum. And he's going to carry on Eagle Forum in the years into the future because we are an organization with real people and real people as state leaders all over the country. Thank you so much, Ed. And Phyllis, are you yeah, ready thanks. for some uh, callers here? Yes. All right, you got it. 1-800-736-3202. Again, 1-800-736-3202. We'll begin in Great Neck, New York to talk to Bob. And uh, call f a question for Alex Newman, our guest. Hello there, Bob. Yeah, hi. Hey, Alex Newman. Hi, Phyllis. This is Bob Unger. I don't know if you remember me. But I spoke at the Eagle Forum conference in Crystal City, Washington, uh, around 1992 or 1993. And uh, I spoke about reading and phonics at your conference. And uh, I talked about homeschooling my son and my other kids and how I discovered what the schools were doing and how I became friends with the co-author of Alex's book, the wonderful Sam Blumenfeld, and we remained friends over the years. And I want to point out that, that it was Sam Blumenfeld in a book that he wrote called The OBE, Whole Language Fraud. He stated that Thomas Stitched, who was the undersecretary of labor to that creep Robert Reich, made the statement that we do not need literate people. We need a manageable workforce, although we need a small cadre, in other words, an elite cabal of innovative and educated people. And he was following in the footsteps of Thomas Dewey, who called reading a fetish, as if it was some kind of perversion. And so parents, who are mostly clueless, 
because they didn't listen to Phyllis Schlafly many, many years ago. They send their kids and they trust that these teachers, most of whom have the lowest SAT scores at every college they attend, and I don't mean to say that every teacher is that way, but certainly a very high proportion of them are, and then they have the behavioral scientists at all the top corporate foundations who control the curriculum and the brainwashing of these teachers, and so the teachers just follow their orders in a way that... Well, that's right. The, teach, the teachers have to do what they're told and teach the course that the school assigns to them, and uh, it's a bad course. Uh, can you explain what whole language is, which is why the, what well, they replaced... The, sure, yeah, the so called the, the controversy here is between, uh, you know, phonics, where you teach reading the way our alphabet has been taught throughout history, where each letter has a sound associated with it, and you learn to combine the sounds, and each letter is a symbol. One of the great you know. inventions of the world, the alphabet. Absolutely. <laughs> it was a huge advancement in human civilization to be able to record sounds using these symbols that we call letters. Now, what the whole word people do. And this was, this, is, this was exposed as quackery in the 1840s when it was tried in the Boston public schools under Horace Mann. Within a few years, it was yanked out because it was such a disaster. But here they teach the children to read uh, whole words. So they memorize whole words as if they were symbols, you know, in Chinese, where each symbol represents a concept or an idea or something like that. And, uh, you know, this is absolutely absurd when you think about the nature Yes, of it certainly house. is, and I thank you for your call. Thank you so much, Bob. We appreciate it. Now let's work Viola into the conversation from Sioux City, Iowa. Phyllis. Hi, Viola. Hello, Phyllis. Yes, say, I just found out yesterday in the Des Moines Register that uh, our uh, University of Iowa has caved to the demands of the Muslims for uh, permanent campus homes. They, uh, they had a complaint that that the students couldn't make it back from the regular chapel to their classes. Now, and so they're going to build a Muslim a special building. No, it's in the same. It's in the, evidently the same building. They've got a place for the men and for the women to go and pray. And uh, anyway, it's just. Uh, uh, and they they're demanding it for also the other our other two public universities, uh, the University of Northern Iowa and Iowa State. So uh, it's just a horrible situation of caving to uh, to their demands. Well, thanks for notifying us. Uh, you ought to be on your guard, parents, to see what is going on on the college campuses. And what's going on in your public school? Because uh, you may be surprised. Alex Newman, your comment? Uh, you know, it, it, we're seeing this all across the country, and not just in universities. Actually, there's a lawsuit now against their government school where they forced a little girl, I think she was 13, to write out the Islamic Shahada. You know, this is the thing that people say when they convert to Islam, where they say, you know, there is no God but uh, a so-called Allah, and uh, Muhammad is his supposed prophet. Uh, you know, this is really... And the serious. public school it's, wanted her to write that out? They forced her to write that out, yep. And you know what's interesting is they have a... You know, they go nuts if there's any mention of the Bible or any prayer that has to do with Christianity. But anything that is anti-Christian, it seems to be totally fine in the school. So I see that pattern developing. And we talk about that a little bit in the book. I mean, the schools are on a mission to impose this humanism, anything that's anti-Christian, on the students. And this goes back to John Dewey again. He was one of the first signers of the Humanist Manifesto, of the Humanist Manifesto One, And they tell you there very clearly, the very first plank, says uh, we believe the universe is eternally self-existing. And in the Bible it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So they're completely at odds with each other. Uh, the same humanist manifesto says we need to get rid of private property and so on. So, you know, this is all related. As, as long as it's anti-Christian, it's fine in the schools. You know, if you bring in the Bible, if you bring in Christ, if you bring in the God of the Bible, oh man, you know, then the lawsuits start flying. So people need to be aware of this, what's happening, and parents need to protect their kids. Well, people can become aware by reading the book by Sam Blumenfeld and Alex Newman uh, called Crimes of the Educators. And they are indeed crimes, aren't they? 
Yes, indeed. And uh, Alex will continue his conversation here with you in just a second, Phyllis. But first, I want to invite some more listeners into the conversation. 1-800-736-3202. You know, just as Common Core seems to be gaining a foothold, these two veteran educators are out with their new book and really asking, are there sinister forces at work in the education establishment? Phyllis Schlafly considers this book a must-read, and that's why she has Alex Newman on the program here today about why the American population is dumbed down and what to do about it. You're welcome to call in and talk. Good to have you on Eagle Forum Live. The biggest scandal in education today is allowing children to be promoted from grade to grade and even graduate from high school without ever learning how to read. Schools should teach kids how to read in the first grade by a real phonics method. Parents can be easily fooled because first graders are able to memorize a few dozen one-syllable words, and then the books use those same words over and over again. How can you tell if your child is really reading, or if he's just reciting a few words he's memorized and guessing at others? Phyllis Schlafly has developed a simple reading test you can use at home to find out whether your child can actually read or is just guessing at the words. Make sure your son or daughter has every chance to succeed. Don't leave it up to the schools to teach your child this vital skill. Order your free reading test by calling 1-800-700-5228. That's 1-800-700-5228. Or see this test online at turboreader.com. Are you worried about the future of America and the kind of country your children will be living in? Do you think that one person cannot make a difference, so why bother to write your representatives? If you think that, you need to join Eagle Forum, a national organization of conservative and pro-family men and women who have learned how to participate and be effective in the process of self-government and public policy making. Eagle Forum's achievements prove that citizen volunteers can affect government policies in Congress, state legislatures, city councils, and school boards. Our members have been successful in electing candidates at every level and in persuading them to vote for good policies after they are elected. It's obvious there is much more to do, and that's why we need your help. You can get a free sample of our materials by writing Eagle Forum, Alton, Illinois, 62002. That's Eagle Forum, Alton, Illinois, 62002. Or by going to our website, eagleforum.org. That's eagleforum.org. Yes, today is Alex Newman, and we're talking about crimes of the educators. He uh, co-authored a book by Sam Blumenfeld, who was the one who really discovered how the main purpose of the socialists was to end the literacy, the high literacy of American citizens, so it would be easier to sell us socialism and even communism. We have a number of callers here, Phyllis. What do you say we hop back on the telephone lines at 800-736-3202? That's the toll-free line here, 800-736-3202. Donald is listening in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hello, Donald. Hello, I'm Mrs. Safley. Thank you for taking my call. Now, um, I was enrolled in a public school back in around the early 1960s in San Diego County. I uh, remember Fox being my number one favorite subject at the time. And then later on in life, I got to uh, have uh, two co-workers, both older than me, and even a brother-in-law last year, I got to find out. Uh, even those three are older than me. They never had phonics in their public schools. So I tend to wonder if maybe my time during the early 60s might have been uh, towards the end of the area in which uh, phonics would actually be taught in public schools. Uh, Alex Newman, you have any comment on that? Uh, well, you know, phonics is basically expelled from government schools all across the country, and it took a very long time for this to happen. Uh, you know, Dewey was not able to succeed right away. He got millions of dollars from the Rockefeller Dynasty's uh, General Education Board, and slowly they took over, you know, the teachers' colleges and the textbook publishers. They published a couple of these uh, early look say And they were so attractive. They had, they had color, and they had uh, Dick and Jane. Yep. 
he, actually, that's one of the ones that they produce, you know, at, at the Teachers College and at the University of Chicago. And what they did using this quiet, and we actually reprinted one of Dewey's essays in our book. It's called The Primary Education Fetish. It's in the appendix because it's fascinating how he tells you there. We have to do this slowly. We have to do it quietly because if parents figure out what's going on, we're going to jeopardize the success of our entire enterprise here. So they knew what they were doing would not be tolerated by the American people. They knew it flied in the face of all logic, and yet they did it anyway. And so now and that's why you call it a crime. That. And it was a crime to let kids go through school and not learn how to read. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Phyllis, say hello to Edith. Hi, Edith. Welcome. Hello, Edith. We welcome you to Eagle Ford Live. I have Live. been getting um, these first readers for my nieces and nephews. You mean my first this reader? Year, this year I had to go to uh, I got some a couple of three-year-olds, and because I went and got the books for them anyway, the s- public schools here in Fort Wayne are putting kids in, sc- in uh, preschool at three years old, and I wanted to get ahead of that, so I get, went ahead and got those books for them. And also, I had a question. I was wondering what what he, this gentleman thinks about whether... Bernie Sanders would get, if he would actually get elected, what would happen in this country? Oh, how about that, Alex? Uh, well, you know, I, I think it's great what you're doing, trying to get the kids learning how to read before they get into the government school system, because, you know, as Phyllis was saying earlier, once the damage is done, it is very, very hard to undo. Sam used to work on curing dyslexics, people who had been subjected to this whole word method. And once the reflex is developed in the brain, once it's in there, it's very hard to get out. It's, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of time. A, a lot of the people who uh, Sam helped cure, they describe the experience as painful, trying to learn to read the correct way. And now we can show on modern brain scans that it's actually doing physical damage to the brains of the children subjected to this. So it's great that uh, you know, you're doing what you can to make sure the children can read before they're subjected to this craziness. I As, want to reinforce yeah, what Alex said. Uh, that I do believe if the children learn the wrong way, it is much harder to teach them the right way. Mar- Mary is up next here on Eagle Forum Live. Kansas City, Missouri. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, I really appreciate what you're doing. And uh, I've been teaching and tutoring K-12 through for many years because I teach international students. But in 1992, I started and I'd go into the classrooms and I'd see them using whole language, and I thought, this is what grandmothers do with their little baby children, not what teachers have to do to, when they use that whole language to teach the children. And uh, then pretty soon, six years later, which is not really pretty soon, so many children were not able to read that they finally changed the method. But also, I've been tutoring a, a student um, in geography, middle school geography, and it really concerned me that they mentioned the sources that the number one economic system that they mentioned, the first one, was when the government owns everything. And I thought, oh my gosh, and they're teaching these seventh graders that the number one system or the first one they mentioned was not free enterprise, but where the government owns the sources of everything. And I can, I've just seen so many things over the years that, and I had a fourth grade student who was he was had some problems, and he was trying to learn um, long division. And I showed him how to do long division, and uh, he said, no, that's not the way we learn. So I went to his teacher, and uh, she said, oh, we have to teach him four methods of learning long division. And I thought, oh, my goodness, this boy has trouble learning one, and they're trying to teach him four different methods. So it's confusing the children really badly. Well, that sounds like Common Core. Uh, making it oh. so complicated for the kid, so complicated that even the parents don't comprehend it. <laughs> what were you saying, Alex? Uh, you know, this is absolutely deliberate. There's no accident. This isn't, uh, you know, a bunch of well-meaning uh, experts who just made a huge national mistake and suddenly got us in this mess. Uh, you know, what they're seeing is taking, what, what the caller just described is taking place all across this country. Parents everywhere are seeing it, and they need to understand that this is by design. It's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's dangerous, and parents need to protect their kids from this kind of stuff. Well, is it coming from Common Core? 
It is a big part of it. Yeah, you know, Common Core is really, I describe it as the next step on the road toward this final destination <clears throat> where they want to take us. But a Common Core is very, very dangerous. And, I mean, this, this can be shown just from the testimony of the people who served on the Common Core Validation Committee. They said, you know, this is terrible. This is going to dumb down the kids. This is Some of it is based on incorrect math. So, really, this is... You know, this is absolutely ridiculous, and the fact that 44 or 45 states now are imposing this on students is mind-boggling. Middletown, Pennsylvania. Hello, David. Hello, David. Welcome. Well, hello, and I am absolutely thrilled that I managed, that I just happened to turn the radio on and click through a few channels and come upon you people. I'm scribbling down your names. And I cannot wait until I have more time to email you and contact you. I am a blacklisted teacher. Uh, I got my credentials in California in 1987. And I got them in uh, critical areas, which have been critical forever, because as, as uh, Alec Newman said, the SAT level of teachers is so bad they can't find competent teachers in science and math. So I got my credentials in math and science and I did my student teaching in physics and I mean I could go on and on and on but I mean uh, the story that you're telling is so true. People don't understand it. They have the teacher, this mythology of the teacher as being just something special when they're really, they're just people who they crank through, uh, people with low SAT scores that they crank through education programs. They're docile enough not to rock the boat. They get these really good paying jobs. They, they, there's this mythology again that the teachers don't get paid well. And all you have to do is look at what they've been making in California. Back in 2000, the average salary of the K-12 teacher was, uh, was uh, 55000 I haven't even checked it recently. And what happens is people like me just get thrown off the bus. And, and we don't have time to follow, do all the research and stuff that, that men like Alex Newman and Sam Blumenthal. So we need you so badly. And so I'm going to stop my rant now and, and let you guide the, the phone conversation however long you want to talk to me. But, you know, what, what else would you like to know or where would you like to go with this conversation? Because this is thrilling. To, Hi, Alex. Uh, do you have a comment on this? Yeah, you know, I'll just say it's one of the most thrilling experiences since we wrote this book is, has been the incredible number of teachers who have contacted me saying, oh, my goodness, so this is what's been going on. I knew something was wrong. I couldn't put my finger on it. Or other teachers who already knew what was going on and were thrilled that it was finally coming out. Uh, I've talked to teachers who don't know whether they should resign because they feel like they're, you know, subjecting the children to real harm or if they should stay there and do their best to protect the children. So I'm extremely encouraged by the number of educators across this country who understand what's going on or who are, you know, at least they know something is wrong. And, I, you know, if enough people wake up to what's happened here, we do have a chance at fixing this. And so I think that's tremendously encouraging. Well, they can see how dumb it is when the kid is just urged to so-called read by guessing at the picture. And, for example, I remember one picture in the Dick and Jane book on Dick and Jane on a seesaw. And, it's, and the line underneath is, see Dick up, see Jane down. <laughs> now, you've got to be pretty dumb not to figure out what that says. But that's the way it's taught. by uh, the. It's a picture language. It's like the Chinese language. And it's not the phonics way that will enable them to read the great, great books written in the English language. What about that, uh, Alex? Yeah, you, I mean, you're absolutely right. And, you know, one of the books that Sam wrote back in the 70s, The New Illiterates, uh, I just read that again recently. And, he, you know, he took apart all of these uh, look-say readers, all these whole word readers. And, you know, when you see it like that, dissected, it's amazing that they've been able to get away with this scam for generations now. I mean, you know, the federal government did a literacy study in the 90s. They said 55% of Americans can barely read. They read at the worst two levels. I mean, they're essentially functionally illiterate. Maybe they can read a stop sign, but you know, they won't read the newspaper. They won't read their Bible. They won't read their Constitution because they can't. And so, you know, we're spending a trillion dollars on education every year now. It is unbelievable that this could have happened. But, you know, it, it, when I hear teachers it, explaining that, you know, we realize this is going on, we're trying to raise awareness, 
that really warms my heart because we need a lot of people to understand this so we can fix this problem. Well, the teachers are victims just like the kids. Yep. Exactly. And that's what Sam and I argue. You know, sometimes a teacher will read the cover of the book and they'll say, oh, well, you know, I'm not a criminal. And of course you're not. You know, we say in the book, we think teachers, for the most part, are just as much victims as the students. They're going through these education colleges where these so-called experts with their fancy PhDs teach them that the modern way of teaching kids to read is to teach them how to memorize words and guess at the pictures, like you said. And that is absurd. Common sense should tell us that is absurd. And if you want, you know, good arguments, go back to the 1840s. Read what the headmasters in the Boston Public Schools said after this disaster had been tried for a few years. So we have 160 years of knowing that this is absurd, and yet it continues in public schools all across this country. And Alex Newman is visiting today with Phyllis Schlafly on Eagle Forum Live. If you'd like to join in the conversation, we're a toll-free call away, 800-736-3202. Are you concerned about border security or about the effect that millions of illegal aliens are having on illegal drugs, crime, disease, and health care costs? These are only some of the many subjects of national importance covered in the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a monthly newsletter Phyllis has been writing for 42 years. The Phyllis Schlafly Report covers a lot of other subjects, too, such as education, both public school and college, court cases, family and feminism, health care, and United Nations treaties. The Phyllis Schlafly Report always gives you more facts and fewer words than anything in print. This newsletter is also useful to carry with you to share with your friends. You can get a free copy of the Phyllis Schlafly Report on a subject of your particular interest by calling Eagle Forum at 1-800-736-3202. Or you can log on to Eagle Forum's website at eagleforum.org. That's eagleforum.org. Eagle Forum Education Center in St. Louis is the headquarters of Eagle Forum's many educational activities. The center houses a large library of 20th century American history, a unique collection of DVDs and CDs, and extraordinary archives. Eagle Forum's publications include Education Reporter, bringing you important news about parents' rights and public school curriculum. Eagle Forum sponsors activities especially for college students and for Teen Eagles, including an annual Collegians Leadership Summit held each summer in Washington, D.C. Eagle Forum sponsors two radio series, Phyllis Schlafly's three-minute commentaries heard daily on 550 stations, and this Saturday live call-in program now heard on 75 stations. Both broadcasts are streamed on the Internet at eagleforum.org. Eagle Forum, a conservative organization of dedicated Americans, invites you to visit our website at eagleforum.org. We're talking today about the crimes of educators with a very distinguished intellectual who's the co-author of the book, Alex Newman. He's lived all over the world and he's observed different methods. And when we talk about crimes, we're not accusing the teachers. They're the victims of the crimes as well as the students. That's the voice of Phyllis Schlafly, host of Ego Forum Live, as we work in more questions and comments from around the country, including Florence listening in Phoenix, Arizona. Florence, welcome. Thank you. Um, as a reading teacher, I would um, strongly disagree with your um, stating that phonics is expelled um, in Common Core. Um, there actually is no whole language in Common Core, and if you look under the reading foundational skills in Common Core, there's at least um, 20 or 30 specific phonics skills listed. So I think what you're saying about that is quite deceiving. And then um, as a teacher for 22 years, um, I know of nobody who's using the UNESCO curriculum or trying to dumb down America's children or refusing to teach children to read or destroying children intellectually, which, which you're saying. Um, it, no, of course, the teachers are not doing a that. Of teachers that. They're, they're teaching the books that they are assigned. But, but, but you're saying that they're dumbing down America's children. Well, the system the is. Teachers the no, no way on. can uh, young people read the great books written in the English language. They just simply can't do it. 
Well, hey, Florence is actually a caller who called last time I was on the show, and she's called into numerous shows that I've been on. I don't know how she uh, always gets the word before uh, most people, but uh, you know, she she has this uh, tendency to, to try to provide disinformation and promote Common Core. I'm not sure quite who she is or what her deal is, but uh, you know, the evidence for for the fact that American students are being dumbed down is clear, convincing, and irrefutable. Actually, it comes from pri- primary sources from the horse's mouth. So I challenge anybody who wants to learn more about this, and I think everybody needs to learn more about this, to do the research themselves. Don't believe me. Don't believe anybody. Do the research yourself and come to your own conclusions. Read Dewey's essays. Read the primary education fetish where he argues that it's silly that we need to teach uh, little kids how to read and do math, and we should be doing socialization so we can produce good little collectivists. So, you know, the agenda is quite clear. The fruits of that agenda are quite clear as well. Look at what's coming out of our public schools today. You have high school students graduating from high school who can't even read what's written on their high school diploma, and we're spending a trillion dollars a year on education. If you go back to the time of the founders, John Adams said that an American who cannot read is as rare as a comet or an earthquake. I taught my four-year-old how to read. So the government schools are doing it wrong. It's clear, and anybody who denies that either doesn't know what they're talking about or is deliberately trying to mislead you. Memphis, Tennessee. Phyllis, here's Ann. Hello, Ann. Welcome. Hi, Phyllis. Uh, Thank you for taking my call. I just had a question about my two daughters who have already gone through (coughs) school and are now in fourth and fifth grade. And um, and actually, they uh, it's uh, funny. They uh, my one daughter had a sleepover, and I have her friend uh, with me today. And um, <laughs> she actually went to kindergarten and first grade, in, uh, I believe New York and Boston. And now we we are all here in Memphis. And my daughters went to a Christian private school for I think pre K, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Um, and okay. And, and their friend, who was spending the night, did not. I mean, they all seemed to read fine. Um, and honestly, I was uh, kind of dismayed when I saw um, sight words and all of that being sent home in kindergarten at a Christian school, you know, to, for them to memorize. So it seems that, you know, that's kind of in private schools or institutions as well, you know. Well, it's along- certainly true that, that some... St- some teachers know what's going on, and they have tried to counteract the effect of the sight reading, and, and we thank them for what they're trying to do to teach the children really how to read. Uh, you can check whether the child is really guessing at the, at the text from the pictures on the page or really reading. Mm-hmm. Another caller here. What do you say, Phyllis? Okay. Uh, this is Hugh listening in St. Louis. Hello, Hugh. Hi, Hugh. Hello. Yeah. You're on. Yeah, is teaching uh, Darwinism without teaching the controversy uh, an establishment of religion? <laughs> I would argue. I, I would actually argue that it is. Uh, you know, when I went to school, and uh, you know, I was in high school in the nineties. Um, you know, I, I realized later a lot of the so-called evidences they provide for evolution were disproven hoaxes, uh, you know, that were discredited more than 100 years ago. So I think, uh, you know, if this is going to be taught in schools, the, the schools have an obligation to provide other perspectives. I, you know, I think it's, it's a big issue. And I think the reason why they're, they're so dedicated to pushing evolution at all costs, regardless of the controversies, regardless of contradictory evidence and why they won't share any contradictory evidence is because it's really important to undermining the faith of American children. So, you know, they teach them that they came from slime, that their life is no more valuable than a goldfish. And, uh, you know, I think it's fundamental to the worldview, the humanist worldview, that uh, the education establishment wants to instill in all the children. Now here's Ken, Phyllis. Hi, Ken. Welcome. Oh, hey, guys. Um, Well, I think you're, um, all three of you, were missing something much more fundamental. Um, I agree with much of your criticism of modern education and and the subject matters and the way in which they're doing it. I think Phyllis's methods would be far superior. I think evidence shows that historically as well as um, uh, modern evidence. But the, the real problem is that this one viewpoint is maybe a sort of left progressive quote quote viewpoint is being imposed through government what we need is what libertarians say a separation between school and state 
the entirety of education should be handled by private companies, by nonprofit organizations, and by religious organizations. And then the marketplace will see who's actually turning out better kids. So I think the, the problem here is we don't want, say, uh, the Phyllis Schlafly conservative of methods of education, good as they are, to be imposed in government. We really need a separation of, of education and state and let the marketplace uh, choose. Well, that's right. I, I would uh, suggest that they take half the class and teach them the way they've been teaching them and give the other half, class, half of the class my first reader and see who does better. Because uh, the, the ones who learn by the sight reading method learn to memorize a list of words and uh, then they guess at it from the uh, pictures on the page or predict what they think it's going to say next. And that's not reading. Now, Glenwood, Iowa. Phyllis, we have another Ken listening to Eagle Forum Live. Hi, Ken. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, we homeschool for a lot of the reasons that you talked about in the program today. And I was wondering if in the author's research, if he's uh, seen that uh, homeschool is considered a threat or if that's not even a blip on the radar or uh, with the government school programs, if they're paying attention to that at all. Good question. What about that, Alex? Sure, and actually, we close our book with a discussion on homeschooling. One of the things that's absolutely crystal clear is that homeschoolers across the board leave their government school peers in the dust when it comes to academics, to math, to SAT scores, to college enrollment, to career, to socialization. On every metric, homeschoolers are blowing government school kids out of the water. So that's really encouraging. Now, as for uh, you know whether the education establishment considers that a threat, they do, and they've said they do, and uh, we're hearing louder and louder noises for more uh, homeschool regulation. And I think there are people with totalitarian ideals who would very much like to get rid of homeschooling. Now, homeschooling is a powerful force in this country, so that is going to be a big mission. But we have, again, generations of Americans who have been deliberately dumbed down through the government schools so I think Americans really need to be vigilant. If we lose our freedom to homeschool, we are going to be set back 100 years, 200 years, and that is going to be a major problem. So I urge Americans to stay vigilant and right. protect educational liberty at all costs. St. Joseph, Missouri. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Hello. Go. Hello. I enjoy, I enjoy your show. Uh-huh. I try to listen to it every Saturday, and I really enjoy it. And as a retired teacher, I just wanted to say a few things. I grew up in the 50s, and I was taught with the old Dick and Jane books, so we did not learn phonics. And then when I went to college later, I learned phonics, and I was just fabricated because it was such a great way to learn to read. My son went to school in the late 70s. They were not taught phonics, and I was very disappointed. Luckily, he was a good student and, and had no problem. So you could get to my first reader and teach them that way, which is a 100% phonics course. And everybody who's used it, I think, has been very happy and satisfied with it because I believe that reading is a skill that the schools should teach, but they unfortunately are not doing it. Alex Newman has been Phyllis Schlafly's special guest here on Eagle Forum Live today. His book is called Crimes of the Educators. Now, coming up next week... ISIS, of course, has become one of the most talked about topics across the world, but also one of the most mysterious. Where did the group come from, and how did it rise to power? How can it be stopped? Next week, one expert uh, talks to Phyllis on the radical jihad and will take us inside the history and inner workings of the Islamic State, right here on Ego Forum Live.